This is another Blender tutorial. This time we're starting from scratch. We'll be doing ray tracing this time. Delete the cube with pressing X. And we want to create a vase to start off with. So we need to create a mesh circle and hit tab, go into edit mode. Let's move this back down to zero. Okay, it's easier to move things when you just type in the actual coordinates rather than dragging it around. Now we want to extrude this vertically. And again, Z key to lock in the Z axis. And we'll make it uh, about two and a half units tall. You can, again, type in the exact units. And a vase is tapered, and it'll be tapered outwards at the top. So press S to scale it, and drag it outwards. We're going to extrude again, and we hit spacebar immediately. And we scale. And this time we're scaling inwards. We're going to make it a rather thick vase. And to see what we're doing better, we just turn off the shading. Okay, now that we've scaled it inwards, we can extrude again. And this time we're extruding downwards. Again, lock in the Z. We don't want to go all the way to the bottom. And we need to scale again. Hit spacebar when you've positioned it well. And we'll scale it inwards a little bit. Okay, that's it for the vase. Get out of edit mode. Now we'll move this vase a bit. And we'll position it there. We can go in orthographic view. That's numpad five. Go into side view. And we'll just drag it up slightly. Let's go back into perspective view. This time we'll add Suzanne, the monkey. Drag it over here. We'll go into overhead view. Rotate. Face the camera. Drag it back a little bit. Go into side view. Go back into ortho view. Drag it down. And now we'll rotate. We don't want to rotate on all the axes. We want to rotate on the X axis. And place it on the ground. Okay, so now it's laying flat on the ground. And just for fun, we'll add a sphere. We'll do a UV sphere. And we'll place that on the ground. And go to overhead view for positioning. Okay, everything's set up. We just need to adjust the camera. And the camera looks pretty good, but we'll do a render. That's not too bad. We'll want to point the camera up a bit. And rotate. That's good. Now we'll add a plane. Well, we'll actually add a grid so it's just easier to see stuff. And we'll place it at zero, zero, zero. And we'll make the size. Press T for tools. 10 subdivisions is good. We'll make the size 10. And it moves, so we'll move it back. And again, we'll render. It's always good to render to check. We have only one light source. That's not good. So let's add another light source. Go into overhead view. 
right click on this light source and shift D to duplicate. We'll move it over to this side, balance out the lighting, and we'll move this one a little bit over as well. And render again. Never hurts to render. If your machine is rendering slow, change your render resolution to uh, a lower percentage, then it doesn't have to render so much. Okay, uh, let's work with the monkey. We don't need the tools anymore. Let's expand this window. Okay, we need to add a modifier. And we want to subdivide the surface so it's smoother. And we'll again, render to see how it looks. Notice that it's smoother now. One thing that we'll want to do is bring back the tools. We want to smooth the shading for all the objects. There, everything's even smoother now. Okay, so for Suzanne, the monkey, we want to add a new material. And we want a chrome finish, so we'll click on mirror. And we want to make it perfectly reflective. Well, we're not going to make it perfectly reflective. We'll make it about 0.9. We can see what a preview of this. We can change the color to be slightly more gray. And we want specular as well. 0.9 is pretty good. So now you can see that it's very chrome-like. We'll render this. And since everything's gray, that's not very good. So let's go to the grid, add a new material. And we're not gonna make this shiny. No, very little specular. We're gonna add a material. And we're gonna texture it with an image. Okay, you can go shared drive for your textures. And for our texture, we're going to pick a wood floor. You can pick whatever you like. Render this. And you can see the wood floor reflecting off the monkey. It's not a perfect reflection. We want uh, it to be chrome. Chrome isn't a perfect reflection. It's highly reflective, though. Okay, let's go to the sphere. And it needs a new material. And we're going to make it glassy. So this is transparent. And we're going to ray trace. And we're going to have a slight index of refraction. And we're going to increase the Fresnel. We're going to make it very high. Set it to 10 for to start off with and take a look. Okay, so we can see through there. We're going to make the depth about 8. Okay, the Fresnel is capped at 5. That's fine. If we want it to be a little bit murkier, we can lower the Fresnel. And render again. You can see that the edge has increased in thickness because of the Fresnel. Okay, let's make the vase transparent as well. New material. We're going to do transparency. We're going to ray trace. Set the Fresnel of 4. Have the same index of refraction. And render. Okay, we see gray here. That's because it's going to a depth of 2. Again, let's increase the depth to 8.
And now the gray is mostly gone because it can, we can see through it. This gray is just a specular. And to make the vase a little bit more interesting, let's add texture to it. Clouds is fine. And we're going to use this as a material. We don't need color, we need normal. And let's just render with the default settings. So we have a bumpy vase. The bumps are a little bit high. So I'm going to lower the size 0.1. Okay, so now we have a frosted glass look for the vase. And you can see that it is transparent. Uh, because of the bumps, you're not going to get a perfect transparency, but this is a good effect. You can compare this to this and uh, choose what you like for your own images in the future. Don't forget to save your work, and that completes this lesson.